All of us in higher education have considered how to provide a meaningful college education for students with identified learning challenges. How about achieving this goal by improving learning opportunities for all university students? We collaborate with university faculty to design teaching strategies to that end. This collaborative model is guided by the application of three universal design for learning principles, representation, expression, and engagement. Nine guidelines help direct us as we apply a more inclusive approach to the design of a faculty person's instruction. Our holistic model portrays relationships between three cognitive networks, the three principles, the nine guidelines, and the learning checkpoints. Bottom line, better teaching for some means better learning for all. I don't think there's any greater register of the uh, efficacy and value of what we do as, as educators than to know that active learning is going on. It's all about the process that occurs in a social interaction between professors and students that creates a learning environment. Certainly the faculty need in that feedback loop to always be learning from the students and learning how the students learn. And this is where I think we become very excited about the potential of universal design for learning, not only to enhance the experience of students who otherwise might not have access through different learning styles or possibly disabilities, but enhance the learning of all students. One of the things that I've been trying to incorporate into the courses that I teach is uh, getting strategies for making students more active learners. So one of the reasons I sought out a UDL consultation was to learn more about UDL, but more to learn not only what the principles were, but to learn strategies that I could use to incorporate them. My involvement with Universal Design really came out of my own personal experience with disability and then my work um, in disability rights and service organizations. I worked at the Vermont Center for Independent Living for many years and we um, um, worked closely with um, the Institute for Human Centered Design. The Institute for Human Centered Design really engages designers and architects and planners and policy makers in how you move beyond codes and requirements to shape environments and products and approaches to community development that support inclusive design through how we design our spaces and our programs and our learning environments. When teaching works best for me, the professor is really engaged with the class and really passionate about what they know and clearly verbally share that with me. I really appreciate lectures that are really engaging and produce good discussion afterwards and there's an opportunity for me to engage with my peers but also really directly engage with the professor both in the classroom and outside and a lot of flexibility I guess with the expectations so that I feel that what's important and what's expected from the teacher is that I produce work that I'm proud of and that they'll appreciate. Professors really need to be aware that it's not just what they're doing in the classroom or how they're teaching, it's how they're supporting the student and how they're interacting with the student you know, after class, before class, outside the classroom. I've done professional de development through the Center for Teaching and Learning, but those workshops are typically an hour and a half. Um, you might learn how to use some kind of software, and you know, often those workshops are geared to many different faculty across the disciplines. But to have sustained attention on my course with a team of people whose job it was to listen to what I wanted to do and try to help me figure that out, that's been a major difference. And I think that really has helped me to incorporate these principles in a more sustained way. I believe that what makes a group exercise in class exercise successful is one where the teacher shares what they want the outcome to be for this exercise ahead of time and asks us to prepare. Trying to incorporate UDL principles and practices has definitely made things different in the course. Um, in the past, um, I've tried to give them this assignment to collaboratively 
construct a, uh, a wiki page um, where they're educating the rest of the class. But um, most of my course was extremely text-based. And so these presentations, despite my encouraging them to bring in images, to bring in other forms of media, they turned out to be extremely text-based as well. And as a presentation tool, it wasn't working that well because there was sort of one means of expression happening and students who were listening to the presentation were pretty passive. They weren't really engaged. The results of working on this, we did some brainstorming about what the students would like to see in these presentations that would be engaging and came up with sort of a list of criteria there was much more emphasis on visual images, thinking about how the stories themselves have symbols. So I think that the presentations uh, turned out generally to be more engaging of the other students, but also showed that the students who were presenting um, had uh, understood the story in, in a different way than summary. To make teaching universal, um, I would say that variety um, is a big key to making teaching universal. Um, a variety of lecturing methods, a variety of, of um, presentation methods. You know, don't just go with, you know, even one or two things. Go with really as many as you can um, to incorporate all the different styles of learning. I do think that the consultation process created more of an equitable learning environment for students because I was using the tools better to both teach them what they needed to do as learners in this context, but also I used tools that allowed them to give me more feedback, to ask questions that mattered to them so that we could cover things that I might not have planned to, but that they really needed to address. If I could bestow any advice on a faculty member, it would really be to just mindfully consider the principles of universal design which are um, considering how you can design a classroom experience both how you're going to prompt your students to participate and how you as a professor are going to provide the setting and materials needed for everybody to it be engaged and so that means considering representation expression and engagement and thinking about all the diverse needs of your student your student body and how to get them to each individually engage. Because if people are engaged and stimulated, they're going to be motivated to work hard in your class. When you think about you know, designing a building and you want to meet ADA requirements, uh, that's fairly pro forma. There's a protocol. It's like meeting the building code. Really trying to get at universal design uh, transcends that and takes it to another level. And, and benefits everyone and I think that's the aim of universal design as well to enhance the experience and the effectiveness of, of students and faculty working together across the spectrum. So you know you can say it's, also, it's about access but it's really about success as well as access and it's about giving everybody equal access to opportunities for success. Years ago I was uh, interviewing a panel of young people with disabilities and one young woman who was probably in middle school uh, said, well last week um, I was riding on the bus to school. It was snowing like anything and uh, when we finally got to the school there was snow all over the yard and all over the steps and I got off the bus with the other kids and the janitor was shoveling the steps and I went up to him, this is a young woman with a wheelchair, she said, could you shovel the ramp for me? And he said, once I'm through shoveling the steps for everyone else, then I'll do the ramp for you. And she said, but if you shovel the ramp, we can all get in. And that to me is an example of what universal design does. We don't need separate um, when we're planning for inclusive design. Universal Design for Learning and Higher Education is part of a national effort engaged in increasing the accessibility of education for all learners. Using a collaborative model for the intentional design of learning environments, institutions of higher education can allow more students than ever before to access learning opportunities and educational success.